remember the day when I was sitting in my car driving away, I kissed my mother to go to LA. I was driving off the freeway and I was passing Phoenix and the place where I grew up with and I was leaving the city and, and a great fear came across me and tears welled up in my eyes. I was scared. I was frightened about the new destination that God had given me. And I drove into LA and I was getting ready to, to go on back and felt like my heart. I looked at the high rise and I got to my apartment in downtown LA. Looked out the window that night and I saw the buildings and I got down on my knees and I said, Oh Lord, you have given me the dream that I've dreamed for so many years. You have made it become a reality, Lord. This is a time. This is a place, God, but I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. That night I laid on my face for two hours in complete fear, completely broken before the Lord, completely in awe of all the things I saw around me. Then God told me something that I'll never forget. He said, get up. Get up and let me give you strength. Now is the time for the vision. This incredible vision came from an extraordinary story of my father receiving a call from the Assemblies of God saying, would you come to LA and start in a little building called Bethel Temple? He was looking for a pastor and because of the neighborhood, many people turned down that offer. So he looked at me and said, son, could you help me pastor this church in the inner city of Los Angeles at 20 years of age? We didn't have any staff. We didn't really have any way to operate the church. I couldn't get anyone to come to church. One day God just spoke to me and said, forget about where you want to be and just start serving with whatever I put in your hand. And the ministry started by me moving my desk outside of the office onto the street corner with three bags of food and a little old soccer ball to play kick with the kids in the neighborhood. And that's where the Dream Center began. And one day driving down the Hollywood freeway, we saw the famous Queen of Angels Hospital. And it was there where the miracle began to unfold. Walking into that building and talking to the owners of the Queen of Angels Hospital and these precious sisters that were running the building at that time, these nuns. And we told them the story of what could be in the neighborhood. A 24 hour church that would never sleep, ministering to the needs of people every single day. And when we told them that vision, their heart began to break and they told us to make an offer. We didn't expect the meeting to go that far, but we made an offer for $3.9 million on the world famous Queen of Angels Hospital right on the Hollywood Freeway. I noticed the millions of people all around this city, they were all looking for a dream, coming from all over the world, hoping to find one true dream and hoping to find hope in the city of Los Angeles. I can see a 24-7 days a week facility open to whosoever will come. I can see thousands pouring into that building who are being changed by the power of God. I'm here at one of our Adopt-A-Block sites. The Adopt-A-Block program is a program where we take five people 
and we enter into a city block and we look after that block, becoming servants in the neighborhood. The adoptive block really again started with that little desk on the sidewalk, meeting people, building relationships, earning the right to be heard. And I'll never forget with the adoptive block, we started to take two people at a time, knocking on doors, and people would answer the door. We would say, we are your neighborhood servants. What can we do to serve you? Now today, we're going door to door, serving people to over 120 blocks every single week. Adopting neighborhoods, picking up trash, loving on people, serving the community every day. received a phone call from a social worker who knew that we had a food bank on campus and asked if we could make a delivery of food to a family in need. It just devastated my heart as I walked up to this dilapidated apartment in a very scary part of town and I walked in and this mom who was around 25 years of age with over six kids, all of them just in their underwear or diapers and very dirty and there was no furniture in the house other than some couch cushions on the floor that they used as beds. And as soon as we walked in, uh, the kids jumped in our arms and started eating raw zucchini. And I thought, how hungry are these kids that they're willing to eat raw zucchini? And it was in that moment that we realized the need for food here in LA is so big and the people who are really in need of it have no way to come to us at our local food bank on the campus. We need to start taking this food out into the streets. And just like that, we decided to create our mobile food banks and our mobile clothing outreach. Seeing this need, we continue to add more and more sites, and it wasn't long before we were reaching up to 50,000 people a month through our mobile food banks. And never in my life growing up did I ever say that I wanted to be in the ministry, or did I ever think it was possible. I didn't know God could use me in that way. And that's when I started reading in the New Testament just about loving people. And I said, hey, you know, I can do that. going to be some people all around this neighborhood, young men and women, who are on fire on the wrong side, but when God gets a hold of them, they are going to change this community upside down. The Dream Center is not just a place for people to live, it's a place for people to dream again, to rebuild, and it's a place that we don't minister just to their need we minister to the potential. I remember the first time there was a man that was homeless and he got saved, he came down to the altar, he committed his life to Christ. And I looked at him, I said, congratulations. But he got on the bus and he was really sad. He was, he was tearful. I said, what's wrong? He said, I know if I go back to Skid Row, I'm not gonna make it. And it was then where God spoke to my heart and said, we need a residential program to help people get off of drugs and alcohol and have a safe place to go. And that's where the discipleship program was born. The secret to the Dream Center has always been, we give people the luxury of time. Many times people live in survival mode on the streets and they're hustling and making bad decisions simply because they feel like they have to do something quick. But when they come to the Dream Center, they can have a year, even two years sometimes, to rebuild their lives, to walk through the layers of issues, and to allow them to take a deep breath and say, don't worry about where you need to be tomorrow. Get healthy, get well, and get right.
One young boy was walking home from his local elementary school and his classmate asked him, where do you live? And he looked up at the Dream Center Hospital and he said, I live in the biggest home in Los Angeles. The epidemic of homelessness in Los Angeles is really due to veterans homelessness and many families are contributing sadly to that number where we live in a city where people are one paycheck away from being homeless. And to take these families in and to give them a pathway of GED programs and all these resources to help them move on and to see these little children walking around the campus and have a place to stay. And that's what I love the most about the family floor is when children that were in their cars now have a place to call home. common thread with so many of the men and women going through our discipleship program, oftentimes the parents in our homeless family program, 85% of our victims of human trafficking here in Los Angeles were foster youth. So we saw this common thread that they had spent time in foster care and we thought how much better it would have been had we met them as they were aging out to give them a real chance at life, to get the job skill they need, the education that they need, and the love and support. That inspired us opening up our foster youth home. We have an 80 bed facility able to take in kids as they age out. If you look at the success rates of kids who age out, their future looks bleak. And so being able to step in as a family is incredible. We don't want to forget people who have served our country. Now we are serving them by providing them a place to live, a place to stay, and a place to rebuild. We have 60 beds for homeless veterans and that beautiful house for women that just opened up in the men's floor. The thing that I love the most about our veterans program is that they have a new mission now, and that is to serve in the streets of our city and be mentors in our community. This is becoming the church that America is building. America is contributing to. This is a church that every person is reaching in one way or another. And because of that vision, I can see that 1200 room hospital filled. A city of hope. We love to change the atmosphere of the community at the Dream Center. And the way that we do that is through major events. We love to party in the community. We minister in so many incredible ways, bike giveaways, toy giveaways. Every couple months we do something major like this, it's like the Kershaw back to school event where the Dodgers come out and Clayton Kershaw and Justin Turner, we give out thousands of backpacks. All these acts of compassion just open up the neighborhood to the church is a place without walls. You don't see fences around the Dream Center. You don't see security gates. All you see is people coming and going and parties that are taking place and people that are just being blessed. We believe in all of our heart what God has called us to do. But in my heart, there's no group of people that I admire any more than you people. You've literally come to give your time, to give your youth, to give your energy, because one reason, you've got a dream, a dream that's God's dream. Whatever it takes, that's been our mindset, whether it be my father on his 60th birthday running from Phoenix to Los Angeles to raise money, that crazy feat that he did, or whether it's me running the World Marathon Challenge where I ran seven marathons on seven continents in seven 
consecutive days, something I would never do again for the rest of my life. But that was a time we needed a miracle and, and deciding that we're gonna be the miracle. We're gonna do whatever it takes to keep the ministry going forward. Every time we've stepped out and done something new, you have been there every step of the way. It's been a miracle every month, but it is God who has supplied and sustained us. Everyone's brought what they could to the table. It's just been beautiful to see how God has provided. And that's the kind of people that have really built the Dream Center, the kind of people that we have in our life that are dear friends. to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and God is doing something great and he's going to use all of you to work a great work. I still believe that God can do anything.